Praise the Lord. Welcome back, saints and seekers of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for joining me. I pray you're having a wonderful worship weekend. Well, we're in chapter 19 of reading the book of Acts. And I just want to preface this chapter uh, by reminding us that men teach us things but we need to learn of the Lord. We need to be led by the Holy Spirit into all truth. And this word of God needs to be that truth. This needs to be what we establish our faith on. So there is teaching in chapter 19 that doesn't go along with everything that everyone's teaching today. And uh, we just really need to be cautioned if people are saying, this scripture doesn't count and throw out these scriptures and we don't have to do this or that, but we see in the word that the Lord said to do it or the apostles commanded to do it, that that is not something we take lightly and say, you don't have to do that. That is, uh, we're getting into a treacherous territory there. So I just, uh, my prayer is as we approach chapter 19 of Acts, that you let the word speak to you. If you need correction in a matter, let it correct you. Uh, when we're through reading, you study it more, follow it through. But we are in times where we need to obey the Lord. We need to align with the word. The Lord has spoken that to me before. Alignment and recalibrate. You know, if you recalibrate a gun, the sight is off. You've got to bring it back into alignment. So that is what he does with us. As we are reading the word of God, if he's chastising you in it, correcting you, bringing reproof, instructing you in righteousness, that is what he designed the scriptures to do. You are to be taught to follow the Lord Jesus Christ by the word of God. And men can be in error. He did send a five-fold ministry. And uh, how wonderful preachers, the pastors, the teachers, the evangelists, the apostles, and the prophets to bring the word of God. Everyone is not a true teacher that teaches. Everyone is not a true prophet that prophesies. And there are people who make mistakes. And there are blind that just don't see it, the blind leading the blind. We don't want to do that, do we? We don't want to follow wrong teaching. So, Lord Jesus, please just open our hearts to hear what you speak to us through the word of God to correct, to be chastised where we need to be and to align with your word and uh, to let go of traditions of men if we need to do so but to line up with your word because you are the true judge and you've told us we will be judged by the word. Help us to hear it, to receive it, to embrace it and to love it. Father, in Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Chapter 19 of the book of Acts. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coast, coast, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. I'm going to stop right here and explain what we have just read. Paul's come to disciples that already believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. He asked them if they received the Holy Ghost. They wanted the uh, disciples to quickly seek and receive the baptism of the Holy Ghost because its power 
from on high and enables you to lead that overcoming Christian life. So he asked them if they'd received it. No, they hadn't heard they could. He asked them what were they baptized unto, unto John's baptism. He explains that John was teaching a baptism of repentance, that he was also pointing to Jesus, saying that you should believe on Jesus who would come after him. And when they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they've already been baptized unto John's baptism. But now when they hear Paul saying, you need to be baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus, they obey and do that. Now we have people today that are downplaying baptism, that it's not needful. If you want to do it, fine. That is not what the word teaches. Verse 6, And when Paul had laid his hands up on them, the Holy Ghost came on them, and they spake with tongues and prophesied. Let's stop right there. There are people that teach that uh, tongues went away. Just the apostles and disciples the day of Pentecost received that. Well, here's later Paul teaching laying hands on people in Ephesus, they're speaking in tongues. In chapter 10 of Acts, um, the Holy Ghost fell on the Gentiles that Peter was preaching to, and his Jewish friends heard them speak in tongues. Verse 7, And all the men were about twelve. And he went into the synagogue and spake boldly for the space of three months, disputing and persuading the things concerning the kingdom of God. But when divers were hardened and believed not, but spake evil of that way before the multitude, he departed from them and separated the disciples, disputing daily in the school of one Tyrannus. And this continued by the space of two years, so that all they which dwelt in Asia heard the word of the Lord Jesus, both Jews and Greeks. And God wrought special miracles by the hands of Paul, so that from his body were brought unto the sick handkerchiefs or aprons, and the diseases departed from them, and the evil spirits went out of them. Then certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists, took upon them to call over them which had evil spirits the name of the Lord Jesus, saying, We adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preacheth, and there were seven sons of one Sceva, a Jew and chief of the priests, which did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, Jesus, I know, and Paul I know, but who are ye? <laughs> well, that's interesting. We better be careful and make sure it is the Lord Jesus that we know. And that we're fully sold out to him, believing in him and what he told us we could operate in by his authority, by the power of Jesus. We can't do anything by our own power. They were trying to use the name and copy Paul, but they weren't sold out to Jesus. So it wasn't working. The evil spirit did not recognize their authority. Verse 16, And the man in whom the evil spirit was leaped on them and overcame them and prevailed against them, so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. Well, that's embarrassing, isn't it? Verse 17, And this was known to all the Jews and Greeks, also dwelling at Ephesus, and fear fell on them all, and the name of the Lord Jesus was magnified. And many that believed came and confessed and showed their deeds. Many of them also, which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men. And they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. So mightily grew the word of God and prevailed. Well, let's stop right there and talk about this a minute. They brought their curious arts, books together, and burned them. And they were worth money in the world. But they burned them. And that's what the Lord wants us to do. He wants us to get all this worldly junk out 
all the occult things out, all of the statues out, everything that has anything to do with a false religion that we've got in our house or yard, etc. He wants it out. It needs to be burned. All of the filthy films, filthy music, he wants it out of our lives. He wants us clean. You're the only one who can do this. You know, my when uh, my son was young, they had a little thing that came out, a little, it just looked like a little stuffed animal. I didn't like the looks of it, but uh, we were driving one day, and that thing just spoke in my car, just of its own accord. It got burned. And, uh, you know, it's really come to a place where it's hard to walk down a toy aisle with your grandchildren. They want things that you know in your spirit has the wrong spirit on it. If it looks demonic, it is demonic. There are things being promoted to take over our children's minds and spirits. And we need to clean house. The Lord is coming and he doesn't want us divided. I'm trying to think what I was thinking of earlier today. I was thinking you can't drink from the cup of God and the cup of this world. That's what I was thinking earlier today. You can't serve God and mammon. You can't serve God and the devil. You can't go to church on Sunday and go sit through a filthy halftime satanic ritual at a game or a concert. You've got to make up your mind. The Lord is coming, and we've got to make up our mind what we're doing, and we've got to clean house, get our houses in order, and we need to do it now. No more putting things off. Uh, have the courage to do what you need to do for your family and get things cleaned up. Verse 21, after these things were ended, Paul purposed in the spirit when he had passed through Macedonia and Achaia to go to Jerusalem, saying, after I have been there, I must also see Rome. So he sent into Macedonia two of them that ministered unto him, Timotheus and Erastus, but he himself stayed in Asia for a season. And the same time there arose no small stir about that way. For a certain man named Demetrius, a silversmith, which made silver shrines for Diana, brought no small gain unto the craftsmen. So he's making shrines to the goddess Diana that he sells and makes good money off of. Verse 25, whom he called together with the workmen of like occupation and said, Sirs, ye know that by this craft we have our wealth. Moreover, ye see and hear that not alone at Ephesus, but also throughout all Asia, this Paul hath persuaded and turned away much people, saying that they be no gods which are made with hands so that not only this our craft is in danger to be set at naught, but also that the temple of the great goddess Diana should be despised, and her magnificence should be destroyed, whom all Asia and the world worshipeth. And when they heard these sayings, they were full of wrath and cried out, saying, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. And the whole city was filled with confusion, and having caught Gaius and Aristarchus, Men of Macedonia, Paul's companions in travel, they rushed with one accord into the theater. And when Paul would have entered in unto the people, the disciples suffered him not. And certain of the chief of Asia, which were his friends, sent unto him, desiring him that he would not adventure himself into the theater. Some therefore cried one thing and some another, for the assembly was confused, and the more part knew not wherefore they were come together. And they drew Alexander out of the multitude, the Jews putting him forward. And Alexander beckoned with the hand and would have made his defense unto the people. But when they knew that he was a Jew, all with one voice about the space of two hours cried out, Great is Diana of the Ephesians. 
And when the town clerk had appeased the people, he said, Ye men of Ephesus, what man is there that knoweth not how that the city of the Ephesians is a worshiper of the great goddess Diana and of the image which fell down from Jupiter? Seeing then that these things cannot be spoken against, ye ought to be quiet and to do nothing rashly. For ye have brought hither these men, which are neither robbers of churches, nor yet blasphemers of your goddess. Wherefore, if Demetrius and the craftsmen which are with him have a matter against any man, the law is open, and there are deputies. Let them implead one another. But if ye inquire anything concerning other matters, it shall be determined in a lawful assembly. For we are in danger to be called in question for this day's uproar, there being no cause whereby we may give an account of this concourse. And when he had thus spoken, he dismissed the assembly. So the town clerk gets a hold of the riot, says the right thing, and gets uh, some order back. But Paul is uh, just not able to go in. It would have really been a riot if he had went and entered that theater. So again, knowing when to stay and when to go. And uh, uh, we follow the leading of the Holy Spirit. But we also know that the scripture tells us there is safety in a multitude of counselors. So uh, Paul's friends are around him saying, no, 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 we need you not to go in there. This is not good. So we need to listen to people that have wisdom and um, hear from the Lord what we need to do. I hope you pray over and consider Acts chapter 19. Um, share it with someone. If you know someone is uh, saying things like, oh, those scriptures don't matter, and I don't have to do this. You know, the, the Bible is very clear that in the end times, men will heap to themselves teachers that tickle their ears. What does that mean? They only want teachers that tell them what they want to hear. They don't want to hear about obedience. They don't want to hear about crucifying the flesh. They want to hear that they have money coming in the mailbox and that they're going to have a successful business and their beautiful mate is coming and on and on. They want to hear what they want to hear. This is our flesh. This is a, a normal thing. But we're told in the word of God to watch for this time and that we we need to be able to receive sound doctrine. The only sound doctrine we have is the Word of God. And when preachers preach it by the Spirit of God, following the Word of God, that is a man that you can follow. Praise God. Well, I love you. Jesus loves you more. Acts 2.38 tells you what to do to obey the plan of salvation. Be blessed.